Good morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you're choosing to watch this. My name is Rustin Comer. This is Danielle Jones, and we are both pastors at two different churches. Danielle at Wayzata Community Church, me at St. Matthew in uh, Walnut Creek. And we are happy to be studying God's Word together and invite you yes. to join us. Uh, mm -hmm. You'll see this happening throughout the next few months. Like We're going to continue to study together and learn together and talk together because it matters to us. And some of you have said you liked it. So <laughs> until you say you don't like it, we may keep doing it. We'll see what St. Matthew thinks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that being said, um, we're studying the book of James right now. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the epistle of, of James, who was the brother of Jesus and the uh, kind of patriarch of Jerusalem and super important character in faith. And we're in chapter 2, verses uh, 14 through 26. We'd love for you to read along with us in your Bible. We're currently reading from the New Revised Standard Version, um, but read whatever version you would like, and it'll also be at the bottom of the screen. All right, so we're going to read verses 14 through 26, chapter 2. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you, can, if you say you have faith but you do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I by my works will show you my faith. You believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you senseless person, that faith apart from works is barren? Was not our ancestor Abraham justified by works when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was brought to completion by the works. Thus, the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. Likewise, was not Rahab the prostitute also justified by works when she welcomed the messengers and sent them out by another road? For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. Hmm. I love this one. You do? I do. Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> I do. Like, I, I, I love the idea that because I'm a doer, <laughs> right? Yeah, so yeah. like, this affirms my faith, so I like it. Um, it's very Western of you. Thanks. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think part, I, part of what I love that he's doing here, again, I think in this whole chapter, in chapter two, mm -hmm. James is speaking to community problems within a specific church. It's clear. Right? The first That's half why, of the chapter makes it very and clear. And this one too, right? When you start saying, um, if a brother's naked, needs something, and you say, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, this is the exact, very similar words to what Paul says to one of the churches when he says, listen, if all you're doing is giving the scraps of your communion to the poor, but you're eating your fill, mm -hmm. you've lost your way about what the Eucharist is even about. Yeah, yeah. Right? And that's like the go in peace that we've already eaten, you know, kind of language is talking about the ritual acts of the early church. Mm -hmm. And so he's calling them into question for doing those kind of things without caring for their neighbor. Yes. That kind of, I'm, I'm saying what I should be saying, but I'm not going the extra mile to do the thing mm -hmm. I should be doing. Yeah, and you've, you've lost the purpose of the sacrament, right? Well, and what I would say is saying something matters yeah. and is um, a piece, but doing something changes our schedule, mm -hmm. changes our routine, changes what we're, don't you think? I do. So yeah. there's a difference between doing what I want to do and doing what needs to be done in response to someone in need. And usually doing what needs to be done in response to someone in need is inconvenient. Generally, yeah, I would say always. I know. You know, and this is like one of my favorite things. I wrote this forever ago, but I wrote a paper in my undergraduate um, where I had just been reading the way of Jesus in the Gospels. And... Um, what I noticed was that 90% of what's written is Jesus being interrupted. Hmm. Like, 
Interesting. They'll say like while he was on his way, this happened. Oh yeah. While right. this, while he was going here, this happened. Like the story is never the actual thing he was going to do. Yeah. Right. He's like right. walking through a crowd, talking. <laughs> this destroyed woman touches his garment, and he's like, "Wait a sec." Yeah. Who was it? I just felt something change in me. Yeah. Who? Wait. We're gonna stop. We're gonna yeah. stop. There's an interruption. We gotta pay attention. Woman at the well, right? Like you can just name. Like every significant story, yeah. even the parables, they're generally taught because some person asked Jesus a question as he was teaching about something else. So you have these kind of flips. And I'll tell you what he's not worried about. He's really not worried about his schedule. No. I mean, he really operates out of this deep belief that what, I mean, he has a plan. He has a journey yeah. that he's on. He knows he's going to get to Jerusalem. I mean, that is the end goal for sure. But he... Um, He's willing to stay longer than he planned on in some places. He's willing to walk through places more quickly than he thought he would when people mm -hmm. are not responsive to the gospel. And there's, you know, the Samaritans say, please don't come. We don't want to yeah. talk to you right now. Um, his own hometown tries to throw him off the cliff. And he's like, okay, we're not going to go back there right. again. And so there is a deep presence, which reminds me of what we talked about a couple episodes ago with this. It's the listening, mm -hmm. right? Listening to what is going on around him listening to the people that he's being surrounded by and responding and listening to the Holy Spirit. Who yeah. touched me? How come I feel different in this space? Totally. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think it's it's a fascinating, right? My, my friend Dino used to always say, like, quoting this, like he would say, you know, you show me your faith, I'll show you my works. He would, his kind of framing was like, the world knows what we believe by what we do, not what we say. Mm -hmm. Right? It's that the what we say should be the affirmation of what we do. Yeah. Like we should do first, then speak. Versus, mm -hmm. I think a lot of times now we speak and then do. Mm -hmm. Like, if you flip that, and I think about people like Mother Teresa and people like Dorothy Day and people like that who their faith was an active doing faith. And then when somebody stopped them along the way and said, wait, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Yeah. Then they would talk about, hey, like I'm provoked by a loving God to love people that the world seems as unloving. Yeah. Lovable. Yeah. Yeah. And then I love this bottom part, right, where he jumps into Abraham and to Rahab. And if, you, if you're a fan of Hebrews chapter 11, right, mm -hmm. where you have the wall of faith, he's just picking, he's cherry picking pieces of that. Yes. And reminding us that when, when God talks about faith of people, it's not about people assenting to who God is. Mm -hmm. It's about people who in the midst of difficult moments – did the right thing. Yeah. And respond. I always wish that, you know, in all these um, in all these stories, I mean, Rahab, Abraham, any of the stories of the people that Jesus interacts with, whether it's the woman that you referred to who, you know, touches the hem of his gown, like, don't you just wish you could see then what happened? Because mm. we do focus on this transformational moment that each one has had, but then what happened? You get the sense, sometimes you get a little... Um, a little teaser because at the end of the story it'll say, and he went and he followed for the rest of his life, or he went and he right. went to his hometown and told everyone, or or like the Good Samaritan where it says she, or not the Good Samaritan, the woman at the Samaritan, the Samaritan woman at the well, she goes back and then the community comes and he stays there for three days. Yes. Right? So you get the just the one sentence and he stayed for three days. Yes. So that what what is the transform? What continues to transpire? I guess yeah. after that action. Um, yeah. But the fascinating right. part, right, like I think that should somewhat trigger us is that's not the part of the story that we know, Yeah. right? We know the part of the story where there was a person in need and Jesus responds. Yeah. And to be a follower in the way of Jesus, right? This is the challenge I think of reawakening Western faith is, hmm. man, like what? Like this is where I love COVID, like – I don't love COVID. I hate COVID. <laughs> but like what I love about this moment is it's this moment where we get to ask ourselves the question, like, what does it really mean to be church? Yeah. Yep. Like for many of us, church has become just a worship game, like a, a, a worship event. Yeah. 
And uh, I think in many of the texts of the prophets, that's what it had become for them too. Yeah. And then they weren't doing the things that the way of Jesus inspires and, and requires. Yeah. And and so I love this awakening and saying, okay, what you know, what are we gonna do? Yep. Yeah. How do we live out our faith in this new way? It's really interesting too, because what we used to do it has changed so much. And so I do think I have found that it's been very interesting as a pastor who you and I have talked about this a lot. Like in the seasons of our lives we haven't been working at a church, we don't go to church. <laughs> right. Because our faith is so tied to the serving that we do. Yeah. And so it's been interesting to be physically out of the space on Sundays in the times when we generally would spend a whole day mm -hmm. at the church and to feel what that feels like. And it's been just as interesting for my family because my husband was a pastor for a long time. And then my kids have, I mean, they would go to, they would be at church for five hours a Sunday morning, right. every Wednesday night. Now they're not doing any of that. So I have, in a different way than ever before, had to think about what do we do as a family, both to mm. serve and to uh, our grow faith. our faith. And yeah. I have to say, it, it it doesn't come as naturally to us as I would hope it would. Yeah, it's hard. It is hard. And, and we are really having to find some new ways to... Do it. But what's also funny is that it, it ends up being the simplest things, like mm -hmm. the meals shared. And we, you know, we've kind of put this d devotional piece into our mealtime, which we weren't doing before. Yeah. We've had so many more meals together, too, during COVID, which has been different. We've been trying to respond in our neighborhood as well. Mm. You know, what does it mean to be more grounded in your neighborhood um, in this space? So new invitations, I think, that that are challenging me, what I would say, what, what I would have said before COVID about who we are and what we do is different than who we really are now and what we do. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. And I think it is hard. And I think often because faith is professionalized for us mm -hmm. in many ways, like we don't often have to think about how we're going to live out our familial faith. Yeah. Um, and we're, you know, like as we're moving, we're like, how do we ritualize this movement for our kids? Like. Yeah. I would, you know, generally I wouldn't have thought about that. Yeah. COVID has helped me think, okay, I need to, I need to process, like, how do I want them to understand what the Spirit's doing in this space? At the same time, I think what it's also reminded me is that I love that, the fact that w my husband Brian used to always say when he was working at uh, the church that he was working at, he would say, don't make the decision about being a part of a community every single Sunday morning. Make hmm. the decision once and just follow that decision. So yep. either go or don't go. And I think that that is what I've missed. I've realized that in the faithfulness of having to show up all the time, mm -hmm. the, the times that I have least wanted to show up are the times where some word of grace comes or some action of grace comes and some new life comes too. So yeah. that's what I think, that's where I think we see the faith and works go hand in hand and that you yeah. cannot, you actually can't pull them apart. And I think that's what James is making the case for in this. Yeah, I think, you know, I think like a person who, like I can think of a, a lovely person in our church who deems himself not faithful, um, but he's richly faithful. His yeah. actions showed all the time. Yes. He just doesn't like the word faith. Yeah. Right? So fine. Because like, it sums up something that he... Sums up something that's baggage is, for yeah. him in that way. Mm -hmm. And, you know... Um, like James, you know, writing to a group of people who were born into their faith life. Mm -hmm. They were born into, kind of like our kids, were born into a faith life because they're pastor's kids. And, and you know, what he's trying to say is it's not just about that. You have to choose. Just like or, like our kids are going to have to, you know, we all have to choose. Um, I think it's really important. How our faith is lived out. Yeah. So, so yeah. as you go this week, may you go choosing to do your faith. And let that, let those actions be what speak to those who are listening. And if you don't know exactly what to do, what might that be saying to you about your faith? You yeah. know, like how could that inform how to dig deeper in a new way? Love it. Go in peace. Amen.